Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an interesting problem dealing with kinetic and potential energy. And essentially, we have a runner that's running towards a rope hanging from a ceiling, grabs the rope, swings up, and of course will come to a momentary stop after the runner has reached H1. So the kinetic energy of the runner has been transformed into potential energy. Here we have a different runner that has twice the mass but runs to the rope with the same velocity v. But notice that the rope is only half as long because it's suspended from a ceiling that's only half as high, h over 2 versus h. And again, the runner grabs the rope, swings up, comes to a momentary stop, so that all of its, this runner's kinetic energy has been converted to potential energy and will have reached a height, let's call it h2. So the question is, what is h1 and what is h2 and how do they compare to one another? The way we approach that is to say that the initial energy must equal the final energy. And presumably there's no friction, wind resistance, anything like that. So no energy is lost to overcoming friction or wind resistance. And so we can say that we started with some initial kinetic energy and ended up with some final potential energy. The initial energy will be one half the mass times the velocity squared and the potential energy will be mgh1 so let's call this h1 in case one notice that we have an m on both sides that cancels out we can divide both sides by g so we can say that v squared divided by 2g is equal to h1 now let's go over to the second case with a bigger runner same velocity grabs onto the rope what happens there Again, we can say that energy initial is equal to energy final. The initial energy is kinetic energy initial, and the energy final is potential energy final, just like we did before. Now, the initial kinetic energy, the runner has the same velocity, but it's twice the mass, so it would be 1 half times 2m times v squared. So the only difference here is that the, the mass is twice the mass as before, and then the final energy is potential energy would be mgh but in this case the mass is twice m so it would be 2m times g times h2 notice we have a 2m on both sides so that cancels out and when we solve for h2 we can say that v squared over 2g is equal to h2 and that should be a 2 like that so notice that h1 is v squared over 2g h2 is v squared over 2g so it sounds like it doesn't matter if the runner has more mass or less mass or if the rope is suspended from a higher ceiling or lower ceiling the height in each case must be the same because the initial kinetic energy is relatively the same twice the mass twice the kinetic energy but since it's twice the mass it'd be twice the potential energy the two m's cancel out the one m cancel out the mass is not significant, and therefore you can see that the height is the same in both cases, and that's how it's done.